The Australian government's new copyright bill, Google Play apps are hackable again, emails can be hacked with a simple code, and 14 million people just got doxxed? All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings and happy summer solstice! I'm Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for June 22, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. First off, a huge thanks to everyone watching the show three times a week and supporting us. The news has been crazy lately, so I vote we just get right into it. So hey, what's up with Australia? Passing some interesting laws down there, I see? The Copyright Amendment Online Infringement Bill 2015 was just passed by both houses of Australian Parliament, allowing companies to block overseas sites from viewing if their main purpose is for copyright infringement. Unfortunately, as pointed out by Australian National University College of Law professor Dr. Matthew Rimmer, it's a little vague. Quote, he said, what is primary purpose? There's no definition. What is facilitation? Again, there's no definition. So this means that there could be accidental censorship or censorship made for emotional purposes, not necessarily covered under the law. Now this is the the part where I'd say, hey, VPNs, FTW, which Australia's communication minister named Malcolm Turnbull echoed. So he says, take using a VPN to access Netflix, for example. Turnbull said, quote, where someone is using a VPN to access, for example, Netflix from the United States to get content in respect of which Netflix does not have an Australian license, this bill would not deal with that because you could not say that Netflix in the United States has as its primary purpose the infringement or facilitation of the infr infringement of copyright. So kind of sounds okay. Other than dealing with piracy and copyrighted materials, though, another argument for the bill is that it would save jobs in the art sector. But then we have the Australian Bureau of Statistics, which fact-checks that idea. Basically, jobs have been steadily increasing in the arts, so why did they come up with that? <laughs> Once an answer would be to add legit sources of content delivery as well, which would negate the need to pirate. So that would be my vote. We'll be watching to see how the bill affects our Australian friends. In yet another Android bug report, again, several popular apps in the Google Play Store with over 200 million downloads collectively are just giving out user passwords left and right. As if you get a password, and you get a password, and Paul gets a user password. The reason being is they aren't implementing HTTPS correctly or at all when a user logs in. So if someone is on the same Wi-Fi network as you are, as an example, they could view in plain text your username and password whenever you log into your favorite application from the Google Play Store. So they actually got accepted. So this includes Match.com's apps, Safeway's app, the MBA's apps, and Pizza Hut. So stop ordering that pizza from Pizza Hut. <laughs> the problems were found via researchers at AtBugs, and many were reported to the faulty apps months ago. 14 million people are affected by a huge data breach from the Office of Personnel Government, run by the U.S. government to store information on everyone who works for, again, the U.S. government. <laughs> this includes everyone, from uniformed 18-year-olds to intelligence personnel. The breach was reported to agencies in early May, with the numbers being around 3.2 affected, but new evidence this week makes that number much higher. The Obama administration has called for a 30-day cybersecurity sprint to patch holes in the networks and add better authentication. Many of these networks haven't been updated since the 1990s. A link to the full story below. WTF. And in this week's social engineering report, first announced by Symantec via a YouTube video, in some cases all you need to take over someone's email account is their email address and their recovery phone number. Sadly, this hack isn't very hard to do. If you forget your password, you can generally send yourself a verification code at your phone number to prove your identity and then change it to a new password. An attacker could use this to send your phone number a verification code from your account and then send another text asking for that that same verification code. The attacker could then simply type in that into the email provider and then change your passwords. And boom, they have access. So how do you protect yourself? You can still use this as a way to verify your identity. Just don't send anyone that code. Just don't send it to anyone else, ever. If anybody ever asks for that code other than your email address provider on your computer, don't send it to them, even if it sounds legit. Also, two-factor authentication. It is available and it's really important. And if you can get it for your email provider, use it. 
thank you again to our 200 plus patrons for your support over at patreon.com slash threatwire. It's that little rectangle box that'll get you there if you're watching here right here on YouTube. Of course, if you guys are feeling generous and you want to kick us a few quarters per month for our work over here on Threatwire, that's the place to do it. You guys are making this show deliverable three times a week by Darren, Patrick, and myself, and it's completely ad-free. It's completely independent. So you guys are our support. And my favorite patron perk is the fur baby one because I feel like I get to know you guys so well through these pictures of your pets. They're freaking adorable. It's a great way to start my day. And if you can't donate, you can share, subscribe, all that fun times. Remember to leave your thoughtful comments below for us to feature as well every day. And with that, I'm Shanna Morse. I will see you on the internets. Thank <laughs> you.